during this video, we're going to be making reference to two parts of the mount, the toe being the front and the heel being the rear. The back side of the mount, or the heel, is going to be the side that has the power switch. With the L350 still attached to the pallet, we need to go ahead and remove the fork arm from the azimuth base. You'll notice on the top side of the azimuth base, there's going to be six Allen key hex cap screws. Go ahead, remove all six of these bolts, and will allow us to slide off the fork arm, and we'll be able to rest that gently on the ground. Before removing the fork, make sure that all your wires are secured so that when we lift the fork off, everything passes cleanly through the opening at the bottom of the fork. And once all of the six attachment screws have been removed, the fork itself is held in place with two shoulder bolts that are engaged in slots. So to release, you need to push the fork towards the toe end of the fork and then you should be able to rock it back slightly and lift straight up to remove it. Find a nearby surface covered with some kind of padding and set it down and you should be able to just gently roll it back and lie it down like that. We can set the approximate balance of the system by moving these shoulder bolts to one of the other pull patterns. Uh, in this example, we will move them from position 4 to position 1. And position 1 puts the fork arm closest to the center of rotation, so it would be for lighter telescope systems. Just remove from one position and lock it into the other position. And when the fork arm is installed, these will drop down into the corresponding holes on the azimuth or right ascension axis, and then we'll slide the entire fork slightly to get these uh, lips to engage in the slots on the motor. Before attempting to put the fork arm back onto the azimuth base, we recommend attaching tape around the wires and this will allow the wires to feed up through the fork arm and allow the wires to prevent being pinched when the fork arm is attached. This is the azimuth or right ascension motor of the L350 mount. There are two holes here which the shoulder bolts on the bottom of the fork will drop into and you'll slide the fork backwards to engage in these slots. When you put the fork on, you want to make sure that the heel end of the fork is on this side and the toe end of the fork is on the other side. Once you've engaged the fork in place, there are six screws around the perimeter that come in from the top, which will engage with the bottom of the fork. Whether setting up your L350 in Altaz or on a wedge accessory for equatorial configuration, we need to properly orient the base. Proper orientation when installing the base is seen in this photo. If you're installing in the northern hemisphere, this red arrow needs to be aimed south. If you're installing the mount in the southern hemisphere, this red arrow needs to be aimed to the north. Notice the exact positions for the toe and heel. The small inset photo with the fork arm shows the toe is on the left and the heel is on the right. The shoulder bolts also help you understand the orientation when sliding on the fork arm. The mount will have a notch seen here circled in red on the azimuth base. If you're in the northern hemisphere, this notch needs to be aimed south. If you're in the southern hemisphere, this notch needs to be aimed north. This is crucial for proper alignment of the mount, so do take care of proper orientation when setting up the azimuth base. Now going to lift the fork onto the azimuth motor. As we drop it down, the shoulder bolts are going to drop into holes on the motor, which we'll point out in a moment, and the wire should come up safely through this channel without getting pinched. As we look at the motor over here, those shoulder bolts will drop down through here, 
and once everything is down flat, we'll slide everything backwards so that the edges of the shoulder bolt engage with these slots. The toe side of the fork should face this way, and the heel side should face the direction that the slots are pointing, which is this way. Remember that most of the weight is in the top of the fork here, so it's very top heavy. Keep that in mind when lifting. We'll come straight down, avoiding any pinch points with the cabling. And we'll find where those shoulder bolts drop in. Set it down flat and line up the other side as well. And then we'll slide it backwards towards the arm side of the fork. And once it's engaged, the shoulder bolts should be able to catch and prevent this thing from tipping over. After attaching the altitude axis back onto the azimuth base, you're going to reinstall the six Allen key hex bolts on the underside of the axis. There should be three connections, and they plug into this panel right here. So we'll start from the bottom. When attaching the azimuth motor connector, make sure that you use a small flathead screwdriver to tighten the top and bottom bolts on the connector. Using the supplied USB cable, connect this into the port on the altitude axis. Run this through the base of the mount and connect this to your control PC. Go ahead and run the power cord through the azimuth base and connect this into the socket. With the wiring complete in the base of the mount, now you can begin wiring your imaging equipment. Now these back panels will allow access so you can run wires through the mount and this will prevent any cord wrap. Now these inside grommets will allow you to feed wires down through the mount and store any power supplies you may need. Okay, once we have the fork arm attached back to the azimuth base, we can install our OTA. And for this one, we have the Easy Saddle installed on the arm. So you will see that the lip here is helpful for resting the telescope when installing it perpendicular, but make sure the telescope does sit in the groove before letting go of the telescope as you tighten. As you tighten, you will see these areas become flush with the dovetail. And then make sure that the telescope is approximately balanced once you have your imaging accessories attached. We hope this tutorial video has helped you during the initial setup and installation of your L350 mount. Now while this video can't cover everything, we hope that this was a great start for you. And if you run into any technical problems, you can reach our support department by visiting our website, www.planewave.com, and visiting the support section under Contact Us. We look forward to hearing from you, and hope you enjoyed watching this tutorial.